last couple of weeks have been pretty tough. The, the biggest issue has just been the fever. I haven't been able to, uh, to get rid of the fever. And, um, and that came back and got me last Thursday. I was preparing to go to Texas a and Fully was committed to do it. Was going to get up Saturday morning and, and fly out to meet the team. That's when my 10 days were up. And then, and then my temperature spiked on Thursday night and, and stayed all day Friday. And then I didn't kick it again until Monday. So just really didn't feel good. I think a lot of people can relate to, to this thing. It, it hits some people some ways and it hits other people other ways. And, and uh, just pretty much 12, 13 straight days of not feeling very well at all. And just the last two days have been better. I'll be at practice today for the first time. I've been able to, uh, to see the players a, a little bit on, uh, on Tuesday and Wednesday, you know, with some distance and, but just been able to be, be at the field and walk around just was kind of therapeutic for me. But, uh, but back at it today, I uh, did a practice plan. We'll, we'll be at practice today and, and try to participate as much as I can. You're going to be in the dugout this weekend. That's that's the plan, yes. Okay. Uh, one last thing. Uh, just um, what did you kind of do to kind of keep from going crazy? I mean, I went through it myself, and kind of what did you do to do that? I uh, don't know. Uh, I, I didn't. I didn't have a solution because I went crazy. Uh, it's it's really challenging to uh, to not be able to, you know, go out and do things, go outside, um, you know, walk around. I tried to walk around a little bit. Uh, to keep my body moving, but it just completely wore me down. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, you're just kind of like a prisoner in your own house. I was isolated in the basement for about eight straight days and and uh, just really challenging to to not be able to to see your kids and to see your wife and, and you know, and then to have to watch your team on TV, which it's that that's that's probably the worst part of it was having to, to watch on TV and and just that that's probably the hardest thing I've ever had to do is, is to watch our team and not be able to be there and, and have any control at all. It's, it's, it was a challenge. Thank you. All right. Next we'll go to Mark Weiser and then Jed May. Hey Scott, hope you're feeling better. <laughs> Thanks Mark. Um, so, I mean, we, will it be touch and go in terms of see how you're feeling day after day or, or what has the medical folks said about, um, you know, uh, you know, how long you can, uh, I guess, it, it, you know what I'm saying, it, it, to go from, from not coaching to, to full bore again? Well, that's been the idea of, of being back out a little bit on Tuesday. I, I came out and saw the team before they went to Clemson, uh, before they got on the bus and was able to address them in person for the first time in about 12 days. And, uh, you know, just getting out, that was, it was helpful for me and, and I hope it helped them a little bit. And then uh, yesterday I was at practice and, and kind of watched from the dugout club or of the uh, press club up top and, and just was around a little bit, just outside and, and walked around. And so kind of pacing myself and that's what today's about. I'll be, I'll participate some uh, today in practice. Probably won't be able to throw batting practice. I haven't thrown a baseball in 14 days. So uh, probably won't throw batting practice today. But uh, yeah, that's what today's kind of about, just to, to get out there and move around a little bit and, and raise my voice a little and get my heart rate going a little and uh, to be ready to go this weekend. I don't anticipate uh, doing any backflips in the dugout this weekend, uh, but, uh, but I'm anticipating being able to, uh, to get through the weekend. And uh, is there any plans for, you, for your players or, or the rest of your coaching staff to, to get vaccinated now that that's uh, 16 and older in the state? Well, I mean, again, that's a personal option, and, and that's something that we, we've actually got a, a seminar in about a week for our players to educate them even more about it. That this is why it's recommended. This is why we think you should do it, but uh, we're still going to have players that won't do it, and, and that's, that's their choice, yeah. and uh, it's, it's a personal choice. It's a family choice, and I think we all know people that just don't want to do it for one reason or another, and, and that's their personal choice, so we are educating our student athletes. That's for everybody, not just baseball players that, that, Hey, this is the vaccination. This is what it does. These are the effects. This is how it can help you. And, uh, and, and we do recommend for them to do it, but it's going to be their personal choice. Thank you. Hey coach. Um, just kind of a two part question for you. One, you mentioned just being in your basement and watching the games. 
just how agonizing is it to not be involved in, you know, the, the strategy decisions, the not being able to talk to the guys, you know, pitch by pitch and, and that kind of stuff. And two, I think a couple of the players mentioned that you would send them texts, you know, a group text, I think, today, you know, before or after games. Just how important was that for you to, I guess, still have them, I guess, read your words if they're not actually hearing your voice? Well, I mean, they, they need to hear from me. I mean, I am the head coach. And so I, I tried to reach out to them, you know, certainly before games and after games, you know, whether we won or lost and send out a message to them. And, you know, after the, the Tennessee series, I sent out a pretty lengthy email. Hey, these, this is what I saw, you know, sitting here watching on TV, kind of separated from everything. This is what I saw. This is what we did well. This is what we didn't do well. Um, and, and that's, that's a normal, you know, Monday for me is, is getting in contact with guys and, and, you know, whether it be Monday or Tuesday that we talk about the weekend and, where we got to make some adjustments, but yeah, extremely difficult to not have uh, any control and not to have the, the kind of contact that, that I'm used to having. It's, it's, it's been a challenge. Were you going as far as, you know, charting pitches and that type of stuff in your basement or was you leaving that to the guys that I guess that were there in person? No, that, that would have been just trying to keep me busy. Um, maybe I should have done that because it's just, you know, just the, the time in between pitches and in between innings and you're just walking around and pacing. And, and it's just, it's really difficult when you don't have, when you're not there and you don't have players to talk to or coaches to talk to, and you're, you're literally talking to yourself. Um, and and yeah, I know my, my wife and kids could, could hear me in the basement. You know, they, they knew what was going on. I think they watched some of it and, and, Maybe they didn't want, I know they didn't watch all of it, but they, they knew what was going on based on the volume of what was going on in the basement. Thanks, Coach. Glad to see you're feeling better. Thank you. All right, next we'll go to Davis Baker. Oh, yeah, Coach. First of all, definitely hope you're feeling better. But uh, just what do you think of the job that, you know, Scott Daly did stepping up and becoming the active manager for, uh, you know, those games? Well, Scott is is a flatliner. Uh, anyone that knows Scott Daly knows that he doesn't get too uh, too up or too down. He is very very calm and cool under pressure, and uh, and the players know that and and they really respect that about him. So you know he just did his job, just showed up and say this is what we're going to do and this is how we're going to do it. Coach Kenny took care of the pitchers and and uh, you know I, I've been with Scott for 17 years now and and trust him with everything. So he is a really really good baseball coach and and a good person and, and a hard worker. And, uh, you know, he had our players prepared and Coach Kenny had the, the pitchers prepared and re really couldn't be in better hands than the coaching staff that we have. Brock Bennett, Nelson Ward, you know, all those guys, uh, th they know baseball and uh, the kids respect them. And, and so we're, we're in good hands. When I wasn't here, I, I did not worry about them not being coached well, I can tell you that. Palmer Toombs? Yeah, Coach, you mentioned you know, texting with players and, and such after games. Um, you know, were you able – did you host any team meetings over Zoom or anything? And, and watching the games on TV, do you feel like there was anything that you maybe gained doing that that you don't necessarily get in person? Or, uh, you know, just what was that experience like? We didn't do any Zoom meetings. Uh, you know, I talk with the coaching staff uh, before and after games and you know, before practices and go over practice plans and – and I let them be the communicators because it's, you know, there's only, I mean, we know we, we've gotten so used to this, but there's only so much you can do. And, and I don't want it to be white noise either. I don't want to talk to them just to talk to them. Um, so I, I sent out the messages to the guys that, that I felt like that needed to get them and, and also had some, you know, text messages to, to, Hey, give me a call. When you get this, when things settle down, give me a call. I want to talk to you a little bit. So, you know, did that with several guys. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I just, I just didn't feel the need to sit here and th they didn't have to see me, uh, every single day, but, but they did hear from me a lot. And, uh, but as far as seeing stuff on TV, no, not really. Um, you know, we, we watched the, the film of, of games afterwards. So we're always gathering information, maybe things that we didn't see. Uh, it's, it's amazing the things that you don't see when you're watching on TV, uh, the camera angles don't switch soon enough or. You know, like when Parks Harbor went out, I didn't know why he went out at the time. Um, I, mean, I found out afterwards. I wasn't even allowed to find out during the game because I can't have any contact with anyone in the dugout. I wasn't even allowed to text the trainer. I actually started to. I'm like, nope, I don't think I'm allowed to do that. So I had to wait to find out uh, after the game. You know, he took a took a shot during BP uh, in uh, in an area that made him uncomfortable. 
And uh, by about his second at bat, he just, he just couldn't keep going. So, uh, but I found that out after the game. I had no idea why he came out and obviously was concerned. I'm like, oh no, a hamstring or something like that. But luckily he's, he's okay. Thank you, coach. Okay, thanks guys.